Portsmouth, Ohio. Portsmouth is a city and in the county seat of Scioto County, Ohio, United States. Located in southern Ohio south of Chillicothe, it lies on the north bank of Ohio River, across from Kentucky, just east of the mouth of the Scioto River. The population was 20,226 at the 2010 census. According to early 20th century historian Charles Augustus Hanna, a Shawnee village was founded at the site of modern day Portsmouth in late 1758, following the destruction of Lower Shawnee Town by flood. European Americans began to settle in the 1790s after the American Revolutionary War, and the small town of Alexandria was founded. Located at the confluence, Alexandria was flooded numerous times by the Ohio and the Scioto Rivers. In 1803, Henry Massey found a better location slightly east and somewhat removed from the floodplains. He began to plot the new city by mapping the streets and distributing the land. Portsmouth was founded in 1803 and was established as a city in 1815. It was designated as the county seat. Settlers left Alexandria, and it soon disappeared. The Ohio State Legislature passed black laws in 1804 that restricted movement of free blacks and required persons to carry papers, in an effort to dissuade blacks from settling in the state. These provisions were intermittently enforced by local governments and law enforcement, and sometimes used as an excuse to force African Americans out of settlements. In 1831, Portsmouth drove out African Americans from the city under this pretext. Many settled several miles north in what became known as Houston's Hollow, along the Scioto River. Its residents, especially Joseph Love and Dan Lucas, provided aid to refugee slaves in the following years and assisted them in moving north. Although southern Ohio was dominated in number by anti-abolitionist settlers from the south, some whites also worked to improve conditions for blacks and aid refugee slaves. Portsmouth became important in the antebellum years as part of the Underground Railroad. Fugitive slaves from Kentucky and other parts off the south crossed the Ohio River here. Some found their future in Portsmouth, others moved north along the Scioto River to reach Detroit, Michigan, and get further away from slave catchers. Many continued into Canada to secure their freedom. A historical marker near the Grand Bridge commemorates this period of Portsmouth's history. James Ashley of Portsmouth continued his activism and pursued a political career. After being elected to Congress, he wrote the Thirteenth Amendment, which abolished slavery in 1865 after the American Civil War. Portsmouth quickly developed an industrial base due to its location at the confluence of the Ohio and Scioto Rivers. Early industrial growth included having meat packing and shipping facilities for Thomas Worthington's Chillicothe Farm, located north of Portsmouth on the Scioto River. The city's growth was stimulated by completion of the Ohio and Erie Canal in the 1820s and 1830s, which provided access to the Great Lakes, opening up northern markets. But the construction of the Norfolk and Western, N and W, rail yards beginning in 1838 and the completion of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, B and O. Junction Ath City in the late 1850s quickly surpassed the canal in stimulating growth. The railroad soon carried more freight than the canal, with the B&O connecting city to the Baltimore and Washington, D.C. markets. By the end of the 19th century, Portsmouth became one of the most important industrial cities on the Ohio River between Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Cincinnati, Ohio. The city's growth continued. By 1916, during World War I, Portsmouth was listed as being a major industrial and jobbing center, the fourth largest shoe manufacturing center in the country, and the largest manufacturer of fire and paving bricks in the United States. Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel, later called Empire Detroit Steel employed over 1,000 people. There were 100 other manufacturing companies producing goods from furniture to engines. Such industrial and shipping growth greatly benefited Boneville, a West End neighborhood in Portsmouth where grand buildings were constructed with the wealth from the commerce. As time passed, much of the commerce began to move toward Chillicothe Street, which has continued as the main thoroughfare of Portsmouth. While Bonvidal is receiving new life, it is a shadow of its former self. The city population peaked at just over 42,000 in 1930, see demographics, below. In 1931, the Norfolk Southern Corporation built a grand, Art Deco passenger station in Portsmouth that provided a substantial entry to the city. 
It was located at 16th and Finley Streets. Passengers used the station for access to both interstate and intrastate train lines, which provided basic transportation for many. The widespread availability of affordable automobiles and changing patterns resulted in reduction in rail passenger traffic here and nationally. The station was later used for offices and its keys were turned over to Scioto County in 2003, and the building was demolished in 2004. Suburbanization also affected the city. By the 1950 census, the population had begun to decline, falling below 40,000. Some of this change was due to the effects of highway construction, which stimulated suburban residential development in the post-war years. But during the late 20th century, foreign competition and industrial restructuring resulted in the loss of most of the industrial jobs on which Portsmouth's economy had been based. The jobs were moved out of the area, with many going overseas. Further decline occurred in 1980, following the suspension of operations at Empire Detroit Steel's Portsmouth Works, which took place after the sale of the steel plant to Armco Steel. Armco Steel closed the plant because they did not want to replace the obsolete, open hearth furnaces with the more efficient basic oxygen steel furnaces. The plant also needed a continuous caster to replace the obsolete soaking pits and blooming mill in 1995. When the steel mill was closed, 1,300 steel workers were laid off. As of 2010, Portsmouth has a population of approximately 20,000. It has shared in the loss of jobs due to unskilled labor outsourcing and population migration to a more populous urban areas. Despite its relatively small size, Portsmouth has been a regular stop for recent presidential campaigns of the 21st century. In September 2004, George W. Bush visited the city as part of his re election campaign. Vice presidential candidate John Edwards also visited Portsmouth that month. The campaigns of 2008 resulted in numerous candidates and surrogates visiting Portsmouth, and some spoke at Shawnee State University. Bill Clinton, on behalf of his wife Hillary Clinton, Republican candidate John McCain, and U.S. Senator Barack Obama, who won the election. In 2012, candidate Mitt Romney spoke at Shawnee State University. In March 2016, Bill Clinton visited Portsmouth again to campaign for his wife presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Portsmouth, and other parts of Scioto County, have worked to redevelop blighted properties and create a new economy. After the Scioto County Port Authority secured an initial $30,000 grant from the Scioto Foundation, the Scioto County Land Reutilization Corporation received $2.725 million from the Ohio Housing Finance Agency, OHFA, through the Neighborhood Initiative Program, NIP. Along with adapting disused residential properties, Portsmouth has begun the process of transforming abandoned industrial and commercial properties to other uses. Its industrial past resulted in environmental problems at some sites. Portsmouth was one of 172 communities to receive 279 grants totaling $56.8 million in EPA Brownfield's funding through the Environmental Protection Agency's Assessment and Cleanup Grants. The Southern Ohio Port Authority, SOPA, received grant funding in 2017 of $300,000 as part of a program offered through the EPA in an effort to clean up former industrial sites for other uses. These funds provide aid to underserved and economically disadvantaged communities through the assessment and cleanup of abandoned industrial and commercial properties. They expand the ability of communities to recycle vacant and abandoned properties for new, productive reuses. The city has also initiated new developments in its downtown. The Ohio legislature passed House Bill 233 on April 20, 2016 to authorize cities to create downtown redevelopment districts. They operate similarly to a tax increment finance, TIF, district. The city of Portsmouth formed a downtown redevelopment district DRD in 2017 in the Boneville neighborhood of the city to increase investment and development there. Through the early 21st century, there has been a noticeable increase in investment in Portsmouth's local economy. The Southern Ohio Port Authority has worked ahead with the Joint Economic Development Initiative of Southern Ohio, JETISO, to secure funding for local business. A grant through JETISO from the Fluorgst Opportunity was awarded to Yate Technology, Pater Fam Sauces, Tri America Contractors, Appalachian Wood Flooring, Phase 1, and Columbia Gas Regional Headquarters. The grants resulted in 48 jobs created and 225 jobs retained. New investments and developments in the local economy led to Portsmouth's inclusion in Site Selection Magazine's Top 10 Micropolitan Areas. Selena, 
Defiance and Portsmouth were among a group of cities tied for 10th. Portsmouth attracted nine significant economic development projects in 2016, nearly as many as it had from 2004 to 2013 combined. In 2016, Portsmouth was identified as one of the semi finalists in the America's Best Communities competition. In its community revitalization plan, Portsmouth emphasized using its most valuable asset, the Ohio River, as a key to revitalizing the city. Its goal is to improve commercial and community access to the Portsmouth Riverfront by making the port a premier regional destination for industrial development, small business development, and riverfront recreation. The America's Best Communities competition led to the city identifying Spartan Municipal Stadium as an invaluable asset for such development. The city was recently awarded $25,000 in funding toward its renovation. As of the census of 2010, there were 20,226 people, 8,286 households, and 4,707 families residing in the city. The population density was there were 9,339 housing units at an average density of. The racial makeup of the city was 90.1% white, 5.1% African American, 0.4% Native American, 0.6% Asian, 0.7% from other races, and 3.0% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino of any race were 2.2% of the population. There were 8,286 households out of which 28.5% had children under the age of 18 living with him, 33.9% were married couples living together, 17.5% had a female householder with no husband present, 5.4% had a male householder with no wife present, and 43.2% were non-families. 35.9% of all households were made up of individuals and 15.5% had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.28 and the average family size was 2.93. The median age in the city was 36.1 years. 21.6% of residents were under the age of 18, 14.3% were between the ages of 18 and 24, 23.6% were from 25 to 44. 24.2% were from 45 to 64, and 16.4% were 65 years of age or older. The gender makeup of the city was 46.4% male and 53.6% female. As of the census of 2000, there were 20,909 people, 9,120 households, and 5,216 families residing in the city. The population density was 1,941.4 people per square mile, 749.6 per square kilometer. There were 10,248 housing units at an average density of 951.5 per square mile 367.4 per square kilometer. The racial makeup of the city was 91.50% white, 5.00% African American, 0.63% Native American. 0.61% Asian, 0.02% Pacific Islander, 0.32% from other races, and 1.92% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino of any race were 0.93% of the population. There were 9,120 households out of which 25.9% had children under the age of 18 living with him, 37.9% were married couples living together. 15.6% had a female householder with no husband present, and 42.8% were non-families. 37.3% of all households were made up of individuals and 17.8% had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.19 and the average family size was 2.87. In the city the population was spread out with 22.0% under the age of 18, 11.3% from 18 to 24, 25.9% from 25 to 44, 21.2% from 45 to 64, and 19.6% who were 65 years of age or older. The median age was 38 years. For every 100 females, there were 83.8 males. For every 100 females age 18 and over, there were 78.3 males. The median income for a household in the city was $23,004, and the median income for a family was $31,237. Males had a median income of $31,521 versus $20,896 for females.
The per capita income for the city was $15,078. About 18.3% of families and 23.6% of the population were below the poverty line, including 31.1% of those under age 18 and 14.5% of those age 65 or over. Portsmouth is at the confluence of the Ohio, Scioto, and Little Scioto Rivers. It is a midway point among four major cities, Charleston, West Virginia, Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio, and Lexington, Kentucky, each of which are approximately 90 miles away, roughly a two-hour drive. Much of the terrain is quite hilly due to dissected plateau around it. Both rivers have carved valleys and Portsmouth lies next to both the Scioto and Ohio rivers. It is within the eco-region of the western Allegheny Plateau. According to the United States Census Bureau, the city has a total area of, of which is land and is water. The city charter was adopted on November 6, 1928. The city conducts business at their city hall, which was constructed in 1935. City council meetings are held during the second and fourth weeks in the month. The city reverted from being run by a city manager to a mayor in 1988, with the mayor being elected every four years. In 2012 voters approved returning to a city manager slash council form of government, this took effect in January 2014. Under the city manager slash council system, the mayor and vice mayor are elected members of the city council who are appointed to their positions by the council. The city manager is hired by and reports directly to the council. The city manager oversees the day to day operations of city government and is the direct supervisor of all city department heads. There are six wards in the city with elections of council members from the wards every two years. The city manager is Sam Sutherland. Portsmouth is the county seat for Scioto County. The courthouse is located at the corner of 6th and Court Streets and was constructed in 1936. The sheriff's office and county jail, once located in the courthouse, are located in a new facility, constructed in 2006 at the former site of the Norfolk and Western Rail Depot near US 23. County Commissioners Brian K. Davis, Chairman Michael Crabtree, Kathy E. Coleman. The county commissioners meet twice weekly on Tuesday and Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. in room 107 on the first floor of the Scioto County Courthouse. Portsmouth major employers include Southern Ohio Medical Center, King's Daughters Medical Center, Shawnee State University, Norfolk Southern Corporation Railroad, Southern Ohio Correctional Facility and OSCO Industries. In November 2002, the Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant in nearby Piketon, Ohio was recognized as a nuclear historic landmark by the American Nuclear Society. It had served a military function from 1952 until the mid-1960s, when the mission changed from enriching uranium for nuclear weapons to one focused on producing fuel for commercial nuclear power plants. The Portsmouth Gaseous Diffusion Plant ended enriching operations in 2001 and began to support operational and administrative functions and perform external contract work. The site is currently being cleaned up for future development by Fluor slash B&W. Groff Brothers Flooring and Lumber, the world's largest manufacturer of rift and quartered oak products, has two satellite log yards in Portsmouth, with the company's main office being located across the river in South Shore, Kentucky. Portsmouth is the home of Soul Choice Incorporated, one of the largest manufacturers of shoelaces in the world. Portsmouth is served by two major U.S. routes, 23 and 52. Other significant roads include Ohio State Route 73, 104,139, 140, and 335. The nearest interstate highway is I-64. Interstate 73 is planned to use the newly built Portsmouth Bypass on route from North Carolina to Michigan. The I-74 extension is planned to use US 52 through Portsmouth, running concurrently with I-73 on the eastern side of Portsmouth. Portsmouth is an important location in the Norfolk Southern Railway Network. Norfolk Southern operates a rail yard and locomotive maintenance facility for its long-distance shipping route between the coalfields of West Virginia and points east, to the Great Lakes. Competitor CSX Transportation operates a former Chesapeake and Ohio Railway line just east of the city in Syedaville, which crosses the Ohio River on the historic Syedaville Bridge. Amtrak offers passenger service to the Portsmouth area on its cardinal route between New York City and Chicago. The passenger station is located on CSX Transportation O Track in South Shore, Kentucky, across the Ohio River from Portsmouth. Portsmouth is served by the Greater Portsmouth Regional Airport. PMH, a general aviation airport. The airport is located in Minford, Ohio, approximately northeast of the city. 
The nearest commercial airport is Tri-State Airport, HTS, in Cerrito, West Virginia, approximately outside Huntington, West Virginia and southeast of Portsmouth. Public transportation for Portsmouth and its outlying areas is offered through Access Scioto County, ASC. Portsmouth is the home of Shawnee State University, a public institution established in 1986. It is Ohio's 13th and newest institution of higher education. Campus Map Portsmouth has one public and two private school systems, the Notre Dame Schools and the Portsmouth STEM Academy. The Portsmouth City School District has served the city since its founding in the 1830s and is the public school in the city. Portsmouth City School District is notable having a storied basketball tradition by winning four Asa State Basketball Championships in 1931, 1961, 1978, and 1988. The Trojan basketball team has made 14 Final Four appearances, they are 1925, 1926, 1927, 1929, 1931, 1st, 1934, 2nd, 1939, 1941, 1961, 1st, 1978, 1st, 1980, 2nd, 1988, 1st, 1990, 2nd, and 2012, 2nd. The Trojan football team has also produced some notable teams as of late with an Associated Press Division III state championship in 2000, a regional title, and state semifinal appearance in 2000, and finishing as regional runner-up in both 2001 and 2002. And all the Trojans football team has sent five teams to the postseason since 2000, as of the start of the 2009 season. In 2000, Portsmouth voters passed a much-needed school bond issue which helped construct new schools for the district. The new schools opened for the 2006 to 2007 school year. These schools won the grand prize from School Planning and Management's 2007 Education Design Showcase. The award is awarded annually to the K-12 school that displays excellence in design and functional planning directed toward meeting the needs of the educational program. In addition, the school system plans to build a new $10 million athletic complex. Portsmouth High School has an award winning interactive media program that has won multiple awards for both video and graphic design. The class is under the direction of Chris Cole, and these students run the local cable station TNNCH25. In 2009, the school system completed construction on a new $10 million athletic complex. The Clark Athletic Complex has a new football field, baseball field, softball field tennis courts, and track. The complex is named for Clyde and Meisel Clark of the Clark Foundation, major financial contributors for the construction of the facility. The new complex, situated on the site of the former high school building and across the street from the current high school, has three paintings by mural artist Turbro, a 1992 Portsmouth High School alumnus. The murals depict three of the sports played at the new facility, baseball, tennis, and football. Notre Dame, Catholic, Schools formerly Portsmouth Central Catholic HS, have served the city's Roman Catholics and others since 1852. It is also notable for its football team, founded in 1929. It won two state championships in 1967 and 1970. Since the late 1990s and problems of unemployment, an epidemic of prescription drug abuse has swept the town and surrounding areas. It has caused a dramatic increase in hepatitis C cases in the county, drug related deaths robberies, murder, and an increased incidence of children born addicted to prescription drugs. The most prevalent drug is OxyContin, a synthetic opiate originally developed as a cancer drug, known colloquially as Oxys and Hillbilly Heroin, because of the drug's association with Appalachian areas of Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia. The crisis is blamed on the proliferation of cash-only pain clinics, known as pill mills by locals. According to authorities, there are eight such clinics in Scioto County alone, the largest concentration of such operations per capita in any of Ohio's counties. The clinics began opening in the late 1990s, after state legislators passed a law stating that doctors could not be prosecuted for prescribing painkillers as long as they had examined and documented that a patient was in intractable pain and needed the medication. The slightly more than half a dozen pain clinics dispense nearly 35 million pills a year, or According to 2008 State Pharmacy Board statistics, roughly 460 pills for every resident in a county of 76,000 people. The geographic location has played a role in the size of the problem, with Portsmouth located near the junction of Ohio, 
Kentucky and West Virginia and one routes of several north-south and east-west highways, making it a distribution point for more than just the local area. The separate state jurisdictions do not track prescriptions among the others, making it harder to tell where the prescriptions are going. Generations of poverty have helped to create an underground economy supporting the distribution of illegal substances. As of spring 2011, the county has had more than 120 drug-related deaths over the preceding decade and in 2009 had the second-highest death rate in the state from accidental drug overdoses, although it is sparsely populated compared to the urban population centers of the state. According to Lisa Roberts, a registered nurse with the Portsmouth City Health Department, Southern Ohio distributes four times as many prescription drugs as Northern Ohio, contributing to the high death rates. Local deaths from a lethal drug combination of opiates, sedatives and muscle relaxants are so common that locals have dubbed it the Portsmouth Cocktail. Admissions into rehab facilities for painkiller addictions in the town are five times the national average. Almost one in ten infants born in Scioto County in recent years has been addicted to prescription drugs. Because of the extent of the problem, the Drug Enforcement Administration has listed Scioto County on its watch list of the ten most significant places in the country for trafficking in prescription drugs. In February 2011, NBC Universal had a film crew in the city filming for the cable TV show Intervention. On April 11, 2011 the show aired as a special episode, Intervention in Depth, Hillbilly Heroin. It explored the effects of prescription drug abuse on residents of the town and surrounding area. In 2007 Paul Volkman, a doctor from Chicago who had worked at a pain clinic in Portsmouth since 2003, was indicted. He was tried in February 2011 at the federal court in Cincinnati. Volkman was convicted of 18 counts of illegal prescription drug distribution and was found guilty related to the deaths of four of his patients. He is suspected of causing nearly 20 deaths. He faces from 20 years to life in prison. In 2011 the DEA and state and local law enforcement agencies worked to crack down on this problem. On May 17, 2011 the DEA served immediate suspension orders, suspension of their license to practice medicine, on four local doctors and a pharmacy in Scioto County, including Dr. Margie Temponeris. In a press release, the DEA said that Temponeris was one of the largest dispensers of controlled substances in the U.S. The DEA also served ISOs on three other doctors, John Temponeris, Mark Fantasizzi, and Michael Dawes, and a pharmacy, Prime Pharmacy, located at 902 4th Street in Portsmouth. The DEA had made a preliminary finding that the continued registration of these doctors and pharmacy constitute an imminent danger to public health and safety. The orders prohibit the parties from possessing or dispensing controlled substances, pending the outcome of ongoing investigations. As a result of the ISO, Dr. John Temponeris resigned from his position at the Southern Ohio Medical Center. The support group Solace formed to tackle this problem. It has helped to raise public awareness of the issue and has lobbied the State House for legislation. Governor John Kasich referred to the group in his first State of the State address, and members of the group were featured in the A&E documentary entitled Intervention in Depth, Hillbilly Heroin, 2011. The group opened an official headquarters in Portsmouth and worked with Attorney General Mike DeWine to make a documentary about drug abuse. Solace's efforts have been promoted as an example of how a small, dedicated group could affect real change in their community. But, Ohio voters in 2011 rejected a proposed $1 million drug prevention tax levy backed by Solace and other anti-drug abuse organizations. In May 2011 the Ohio Senate and House unanimously passed House Bill 93, authored by Portsmouth's representative in the Ohio House, Dr. Terry Johnson, which dealt with improved regulation of pain clinics. The legislation called for a performance analysis of the Ohio Automated Rx Review System, limits the ability of prescribers to personally furnish controlled substances, reforms Medicaid provisions to improve consumer education, improves licensing and law enforcement issues related to pain management clinics, and calls for the development of a statewide prescription drug take-back program. The amended bill was signed into law by Governor John Kasich on May 20, 2011. Many historical buildings in Portsmouth have been demolished because of poor upkeep, other city development, or the completion of new buildings that replaced landmarks. Landmarks that have been demolished include the old Norfolk and Western Rail Depot, churches dating back to the early 20th century, houses dating to the 1850s, Grant Middle School, and the old Portsmouth High School and various elementary schools. Many buildings survived from the early 19th century. 
Old churches are among the reminders of Portsmouth's past and identity. The Columbia Theater was given a major facelift after it was damaged by fire. Other noted historic buildings include the Old Monastery, which can be seen for miles, and Spartan Stadium, as well as numerous buildings in the Boneville Historic District, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. In 1982, students from Miami University conducted research on several of Portsmouth's most important historic buildings. This work resulted in an exhibition at the Miami University Art Museum and a book entitled Portsmouth, Architecture in an Ohio River Town. The Portsmouth Public Library is the city's library, founded in 1879. It has branch libraries throughout Scioto County. The Southern Ohio Museum, founded in 1979, has more than 60 exhibits on display including artwork by Clarence Holbrook Carter and Jesse Stewart, China Dolls, Native American artifacts, and works by local artists. The Indian Head Rock is an 8-ton sandstone boulder which until 2007 rested at the bottom of the Ohio River. Historically, the boulder was used to record low river stages. It is notable due to its history and due to the figures and names of individuals which were carved into the rock at times of low water levels. In 1917, the construction of a dam downriver from Portsmouth meant that the rock would forever be submerged, if not for its recovery by a group of local divers led by an Ironton historian. The removal of the rock led the states of Kentucky and Ohio into a legislative battle to determine its ownership and disposition. The rock was returned to the state of Kentucky in 2010. Portsmouth has 14 parks for residents and community use. These include Alexandria Park, Ohio and Scioto River Confluence, Bannon Park, near Farley Square, Branch Rickey Park, on Williams Street near Levy, Buckeye Park, near Branch Rickey Park, Cindy Seacrest Park, Sciataville, Dr. Hartledge Park, Rose Street in Sciataville, Labeled Park, near Spartan Stadium, Larry Heil Park, 23rd Street and Thomas Avenue, Mound Park, 17th and Hutchins Streets, York Park, Riverfront, Spartan Stadium, Tracy Park, Chillicothe and Gay Streets, and Weghorst Park, 4th and Jefferson Street. This active cemetery was established in 1829. Grin Lawn is 40 acres in size and is the only public cemetery in the city of Portsmouth. This cemetery incorporates several smaller cemeteries, which are sections of Grin Lawn Cemetery. Sections included in Grin Lawn Cemetery are City, Evergreen, Hebrew, Holy Redeemer, Hill North, Methodist, Hill South, Robinson, Old Mausoleum, Soldiers Circle, and St. Mary's. The cemetery is located at Off Near Street and Grant Street. It is maintained by the city of Portsmouth. Although developed on higher ground, the city has been subject to seasonal flooding. The city had extensive flooding in 1884, 1913, and 1937. After the flood of 1937, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers constructed a flood wall protecting the city, which prevented two major floods in 1964 and 1997. In 1992, the city of Portsmouth began honoring some of the many accomplishments of its area natives by placing a star on the riverside of the flood wall. This is known as the Portsmouth Wall of Fame and was instituted by then Mayor Frank Gerlach. Some of the honorees include Don Goulet, Al Oliver, and former United States Vice President Dan Quayle, who was not a Portsmouth native. In 1992, a nonprofit group headed by Dr. Louis R. Shabuti was formed to investigate developing a mural based tourist attraction on the flood wall. In the spring of 1993, Mural artist Robert Dafford was commissioned and began painting murals of Portsmouth's history. He hired local art student Erbro as an assistant. Rose subsequently apprenticed to and worked for Dafford for 15 years. The project eventually spanned 60 tall consecutive Portsmouth murals, stretching for over 2,000 feet, 610 meters. Subjects covered by the murals span the history of the area from the ancient mound building Adena and Hopewell cultures to modern sporting events and notable natives. These subjects include the original mural project was finished in the fall of 2003. Since then several additional panels have been added, including murals honoring Portsmouth's baseball heroes in 2006, and the tour of the Scioto River Valley, Tosrev, a bicycle tour between Columbus and Portsmouth in 2007. Portsmouth had a series of semi-pro football teams in the 1920s and 1930s, the most notable being the Portsmouth Shoe Steels, whose roster included player coach Jim Thorpe. From 1929 to 1933, the city was home to the Portsmouth Spartans, which joined the National Football League in 1930. The Spartans competed in the first professional football night game against the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1930. 
Despite their success, the team could not survive in the NFL's second smallest city during the Great Depression. This forced the team to be sold and moved to Detroit in 1934, where it became the Detroit Lions. In the late 20th century, the Portsmouth Explorers were one of the original teams in the Frontier League, a non-affiliated minor league baseball organization. The Explorers played in the league's first three seasons, from 1993 to 1995. In 1938, Portsmouth was also the home of the Portsmouth Redbirds, a minor league team owned by the St. Louis Cardinals. In the late 1990s Portsmouth was home to the Superstar Wrestling Federation before its demise. More recently Revolutionary Championship Wrestling has made its home in Portsmouth, airing on local TV station WQCW. Revolutionary Championship Wrestling in Portsmouth has featured such stars as Big Van Vader, Jerry the King Lawler, Demolition X, Beautiful Bobby Eaton, Wildcat Chris Harris, and Ivan Koloff. Portsmouth is near the dividing line for several television markets, including Columbus, Cincinnati, and Huntington Charleston. There are two local television stations including WTZP, an America One affiliate, and WQCW, a CW affiliate. Portsmouth was, prior to October 2017, served by WPBO, a PBS affiliate. Programs aired on WPBO were broadcast by WASU and Columbus. Local radio stations WPAY FM, WE, WNXT, WC, WZZZ, and WOSP FM serve the radio listeners in the city. Portsmouth is also served by three newspapers. The Portsmouth Daily Times is the city's only daily newspaper and is also available online. The Community Common is a free bi weekly newspaper, and the Scioto Voice is a weekly newspaper which is mailed to subscribers. The University Chronicle is the student-led newspaper at Shawnee State University. Representatives, 1961-1981. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.